All right, YouTube, you don't know how blessed you are because I'm making another video, two videos in one day. It's actually the third video because I made a second video and I wasn't happy with it. So uh, I've got my, my pointer, my professional uh, YouTube lecture pointer, and I'm going to talk about coronavirus. I don't know if you saw the video I put up earlier today. First, I had a video yesterday where I put together a differential equation, which I don't know if it's really appropriate or not, but it seems to me like it ought to work pretty well. It's a simple differential equation that's, that's been used, supposedly, to calculate the way bacteria grow in a petri dish. And uh, it seems to me it ought to work fairly well for a huge population of human beings uh, who are in a, in a pandemic. You know, while the pandemic is progressing normally, while it's, while it's in the fairly early stages, so there's nothing weird going on, so it's, nothing, it's not running up against, you know, a saturated population or a vaccine or something like that. Um, I would I would make a guess here that this equation that I came up with, that I stole, ought to be somewhat accurate. And uh, I based it on some stuff from uh, Johns Hopkins University. Johns Hopkins University has a real-time website where they upgrade, you know, they upgraded all, the, I'm sorry, not upgrade, updated all the time. And it, it lists the death rate. I mean, uh, the total corona case, coronavirus cases, it, it, it also lists the total deaths, the total people who've been rec who've recovered and all this stuff. And, of course, the data is not that great. I mean, uh, if you think about this, this is one of these things where you can't just go on the Internet and look at what other people say and accept it. You have to use your brain because it's kind of a new situation. And the experts have not done a great job so far. So... It makes sense to actually try to use your brain when you think about this. And one of the things you have to, have to realize when you apply common sense is that we're, we're not catching all the cases. Uh, when it comes to the people that are... And let's talk about the people who are alive. I mean, not the people who are dead. The people who are alive, we don't know who they all are. The people who are alive and have this virus. And why is it? Well, because it's a very mild disease. And please don't throw your hands up and start screaming. It is a mild disease. Look it up. I mean, the fact that a tiny percentage of people die from it doesn't mean it's not mild for the rest of us. So a lot of people aren't going to go to the, go to the doctor. They're going to think they got something else. So if you got this disease and you're alive, you may not be tested. So that means when testing gets better, the number of cases will, will go up. And then the number of active cases that are detected is going to go up. I don't know if it can go up you know, retroactively or not, but it's going to go up. It can't go down presumably because one would expect there's not a lot of false... We, never, we haven't heard anything about false positives. So if, there's, if there aren't a lot of false positives, then the case the, the numbers can't go down, but they can go up. And I talked about this in an earlier video, and I said it was good news if, if the number of cases goes up because the death rate is determined in relation to the number of people that have the virus. So we know the death rate is a good solid number because if you're dead, people know it you're going to get counted. If you're alive, you may not get counted. You may not want to go into the Obamacare system and suffer. You may want to just stay home and uh, get drunk. So the, the numbers of dead people are pretty reliable. And I was thinking earlier, why well, I, I wish I had numbers for dead people because that would be more reliable for predicting future deaths. And it might also be even better. For, it might actually be better for predicting future cases, future infections. You know, just because it's a, it's a nicer, solid, more solid number. Well, I got on the Internet, and I found myself, amazingly, some old figures. And I'll, I'll show you. See here, this is T subscript zero, and it's February the 21st. And according to the, the all-knowing Internet, which is never wrong about anything, there were 2,236 people, uh, deaths, recorded as of that date. And then today, uh, earlier today, I looked at the web, and it was 5833 on the Johns Hopkins website. Now, it may be higher now, but, you know, it moves. So I have my, my uh, differential equation up here. It's the same one I used before, except now I'm trying to find out how many people are going to die. So I use D for death, and it's death is a function of time, total deaths. And D subscript zero is uh, the original figure, which is 2236. And T subscript zero is uh, February the 21st. And we have to solve for K subscript D, which is the constant that makes all this stuff happen. And I did all this, and I stuck it in the old Hewlett-Packard, and I came out with this for K. 
And then I plug the numbers in. So here's what I came up with. Um, March 22nd, I predict about 7,800. March the 29th, I predict about 10,500. See, I speak in round terms because I actually have some scientific training. You don't have to say 10,456. Uh, April the 4th, I expect about 14,000. Um, whatever, 30 days after uh, March 14th is, what is that, April uh, 13th? Anyway, whatever it is, 18,700 more or less. Um, that's May, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, May, June, something like 71,155. So, this is July, right? Let me think. May, June, no, oh, it's not July. What's the matter with me? This is, uh, this is April, this is May, and this is June. I'm sorry. So anyway, June, mid-June, 250,000 deaths, give or take. So uh, the previous figure that I had for this was like 150,000. Now, no matter how you slice it, this isn't the flu, this isn't the Spanish flu, this isn't typhus, this isn't the bubonic plague, this is a very, very weak epidemic compared to real, serious, wave your hands in the air and wet your pants pandemics, which is what I've been saying all along. And you're looking at this number and you're saying 248,000 people. Wow, that's a lot. But remember, this is the entire planet, okay? So you've got to divide this by 20 to get uh, the American deaths. So somewhere, you know, 10, 15,000, something like that. And that sounds terrible. But 5,000 people are going to die from a cold in the United States this year. So some, something on the order of a million people are going to die from using tobacco. I mean, it may be 500,000, but it's, it's something. It's big. It's a big old number, and it's yearly. So, and it's, it's in one country. It's not a global figure like this. Uh, chicken pox is going to put five or 10,000 people in the hospital. So we're really waving our hands over nothing. I mean... Now, I'm not saying this is, I, I keep repeating this, I'm not saying this is an in, infallible, perfect figure, and it's definitely going to be this number, of course not. But it's, it's going to be something like this. It's not going to be a million. It's not going to be 10 million. It's, it's not going to be one of these things where, uh, you know, you see Charlton Heston or Will Smith driving around alone because on, a, on, a, you know, on an interstate highway with nobody else because everybody else has died. It's not going to be the Omega Man. And... You know something else? I actually looked up the toilet paper thing because I kept thinking there's got to be some reason why people are buying toilet paper. There has to be. And you know what? There's not. I saw somebody on, on I think it's a Psychology Today website talking about it, and this person said, it's just neurosis. And I said, man, everybody really is wrong. And that's, I don't know, that's a good thing to keep in mind. So uh, even though I do have 700 pounds of toilet paper, in my underground bunker, and I'm not giving it up. Um, I don't defend it as a rational, as a rational purchase. So, uh, some interesting things about this. One of the interesting things is the Chinese had a crazy high death rate early on, and for some reason the Italians have done really badly. But uh, anyway. They're saying they, they expect the figure to be somewhere under 1%, you know, around 1%, something like that. And as I said in another video, if the, numbers, if the number of total cases turns out to be much higher than we think it is, then the death rate's going to go down. It doesn't help the people who are dying. It'll still be the same number of people dying. But the rate will go down, and maybe it'll help people put things in perspective. When the rate goes down, you know, down to where the flu is or far below what the flu has, maybe people will say to themselves, well... Maybe I just don't understand how the world works. Maybe I don't understand how many people die every day, and I've been losing my mind over something that's not a big deal. And then maybe they'll say to themselves, my kids are probably immune to this, and if I get it, I'm extremely unlikely to die. And the people who really have something to be worried about are people who are over 60 and uh, never get out of a chair, you know, who, who basically live welded to a couch, uh, smoking Marlboros all day. Those are the people that really have to be worried. So maybe people, if they see this, my three viewers... Maybe they'll, they'll relax a little bit. But anyway, there was a big old uh, death rate in China at the, at the outset, and I think that's likely to mess this up. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen with that, because you would think if you had a, a big rate at the beginning, that that would tend to, wouldn't that tend to make the curve 
gr more gradual? I would think so. I mean, so this might actually be a low figure. But on the other hand, I don't know. I don't know. It's really interesting. It's good. I, I feel like China has, has screwed everything up. Maybe, what, what I'm thinking is the best thing to do, and I probably said this in another video, is to do this like a week from now, when China is kind of fading in the rearview mirror, and see what happens. And, and I probably said this before, uh, it's really interesting to see what's going on in China, because they are just not reporting a lot of new infections. It's like things are just flattened out in China. And it makes me wonder, maybe only a certain percentage of people are, uh, I mean, maybe the percentage of people that are uh, susceptible to this bug Maybe it's not that high. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand what's happening in China. I really don't. Anyway, um, it's not the Spanish flu. It's not typhus. It's not the bubonic plague. So come out of your house, for goodness sake. And, and all you people are sending me emails, you know, the, the banks, the stores, um, the people who don't even know who I am, yet they're sending me these computerized things out so I think that they care about me. Just knock it off. You know what I mean? Just give it a rest. So, uh, I hope this brings you some peace. I mean, if you're over 60 and all you do is sit around and smoke cigarettes all day, it probably won't. But uh, uh, for everybody else, I, I, hope that, I hope you understand that this, this disease is not going to empty our streets. Except, I mean, it'll empty them temporarily while everybody's cowering. But it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, it's not like graveyards are going to run out of plots. It's not going to happen. So calm down and go on with life. I mean, my prediction is probably, you know, who knows? It may be off by a factor of two or something, but it's not It's not that bad. And it would have to be off by a factor of 10 or 20 or some ridiculous number before this panic was in any way justified. So, not the panic is ever justified. So, uh, hope you enjoy this and uh, talk amongst yourselves.